spirit of the living God and cover you in the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Devils tremble when you walk by. You don't understand that, and that's why so many of us trembles, tremble when we hear about devils. It's kind of reversed. When you come into a territory, the devil despises that because he knows what you can do. He's aware of the power that is within you. And he knows that you have the same ability to change your community that Christ had. But the one thing he banks on is you don't understand that. You think you're some kind of second class citizen to the kingdom. When God said, I took everything that I had in my son and then invested it into you so that you could follow his example. See, Jesus came not only to redeem us. You understand that, right? Yes, pretend you're all Pentecostals. Nod your head. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And say, yes, I understand. Jesus came to redeem. Amen. But he also came to show how to live the life of victory. That's right. Yes. Jesus went through trials and tribulations. And he went through oppositions. I mean, the devil faced him face to face. And he said to him, if thou be the son of God, then command these stones to be turned into bread. And Jesus said, nah, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh forth from the mouth of the Father. Amen? Amen. He met his challenge with the word of God. <laughs> he set that example. Mm -hmm. Now, this battle was so important that, see, people don't understand this. Because the devil was challenging Jesus' right to proclaim that he was the Son of God. <laughs> he said, if you be the Son of God. Yeah. And again he said, if you be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written that he has given his angels charge over you to lift you up lest you should dash your foot against a stone. Amen? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. He didn't say I couldn't do it. He said... I'm not stupid. I'm not going to attempt God. The word once again. Mm -hmm. Finally, he rebuked the devil when the devil said, If you will bow down to me and worship me, I will give you the kingdoms and the nations of the world. And you know, it was his to give. Because he took it from the former ruler of the world who was Adam. So it was his by rights to mm -hmm. offer to whoever he wanted to offer, but he wasn't going to give Jesus anything. Right. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, saying, get thee away from me, because it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God in him alone. Now, why are you going through all this, Brother Lewis? You're here to teach on warfare. I'm showing you how to handle the war. Yeah. Don't speak your opinion about anything. Good. Speak God's word. Because the devil cannot stand against the pure word of God. He must oh, flee from it. Now, when Jesus got done being challenged in the desert where he defeated the devil. See, everybody thinks the devil was defeated on the cross. No, he was finished on the cross. He was defeated in the desert. You understand that? And remember what Satan said to Jesus. If thou be the son of God, then command these stones. Then fall for it. Then fall for the other two. Finally, the devil flees. Next time you see Jesus in confrontation with a demoniac, the first thing the devil says, Jesus, the Son of the Most High, what would you have to do with us? Have you come to torment us before our time? Jesus says, shut up, man. <laughs> Just be quiet. That's modern Hebrew for you, okay? <laughs> and leave. And they left. But what did the devil say to Jesus? Jesus, thou son of the most high. Yes. Mm -hmm. He knew who he was because of the desert. Huh. <laughs> when he went into the desert, he was the son of man. When he came up the other side, he was the son of God. Why do you need a desert in your life? to transform you from a son of man to the son of God. Oh, so to give to you the absolute authority that God sent his son to give to you so that you can do spiritual combat with a defeated foe and they will recognize you as a citizen of the kingdom. Amen. And when he looks at you, he will say, why do you come to me 
Have you come to trouble me before the time? And you tell them, get out of here. You're not touch my family. You're not touch my city. You won't continue to plague my country because there's no room here for you. Get out. And because you are a child of the king, he has to listen. Amen? Amen. By the way, what you said to me earlier startled me because you mispronounced the word king. What you said to me was the peace of the king behind you, and that's okay. But that was too close to the alakam shalom of the Islamic nation. And I went, whoa. And I almost said to you, shalom alakam, which is how you're supposed to answer when they say that to you. That is the peace of Allah. We're not interested in the peace of Allah. <laughs> Allah can pack his bags and get out. Amen. He's done enough damage. We're only interested in the peace of Jesus. Okay? Amen. And you know, all you Gentiles, you all pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen? Yes. Yes. You don't even know what the peace of Jerusalem yes. is. I can. Sure. It's Jesus. It's a person. Amen. And when you pray for that, you are praying for the return of the Messiah. Right. Praise God. Because there will be no peace in Jerusalem or anywhere else until the Messiah returns and establishes his kingdom. Amen. 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 But what do we do until he comes? We stay in church. We moan and groan and complain how difficult the Christian life is. We look at the person that takes our seat by mistake on a Sunday morning and say, what are you doing? That's my chair. Can't you tell by the imprint? <laughs> Be honest. You sat there so long as permanently imprinted the feet. <laughs> you become offended because he sat in your seat. And now you're going to have to start a new imprint in another seat. <laughs> Get over it, folks. Amen? Yeah. Because there's a seat in heaven you can establish an imprint in. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. And it's far more comfortable than the seats down here, trust Amen. me. Amen. We have to be spiritually minded, not devil minded. You see, we're not supposed to be worrying about Satan or about demons because they are defeated already through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen. They are foreigners and have no right in the physical world. I'm going to tell you something that's going to surprise you, but then you'll forgive me because you say, well, he's Jewish, he doesn't know like us people. Okay? But not even God has the right to invade your life without permission. Not even God can do the miraculous in your life if you do not give him permission to do so. He cannot even save you unless you invite him to do so. So if God, who is the creator of all things, Remember, blessed are you, Hassan, king of the universe, creator of all things. Okay? And if he's that powerful, he created all things, but he limits himself. So he cannot invade your life without permission. How can a defeated foe enter into your life? Folks, how can Satan, who is far less than God, a defeated fallen angel, enter into your life unless you invite him. Yeah. Many Christians wrestle with the term of unforgiveness. They can't feel that God loves them enough to forgive them. And they live a life of torment. And many, many Christians will live true life and finally get home to glory. But they will not live this life in victory because they do not understand their God, their Father, and how much He loves them, mm -hmm. and what it means to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. When God says, I forgive, He has a great ability to forget. Amazing. And you can stand in front of God whining all about how miserable you used to be. I mean, if you want to talk about miserable people, let's talk about me. Uh -oh. <laughs> let's look at what I was before I came to Christ. I was God's enemy. I was an occultic person. I, I practiced the way of witchcraft. I did everything you can imagine. There was no goodness in me, no righteousness whatsoever. But that man died Hallelujah. over 40 years ago. He was buried in baptism Amen. with Jesus. And when he was put under the water, all that disappeared from oh. God's sight. Glory to God. 
So when I used to go into the pity party, oh God, you remember? And God says, I don't know what he's talking about. Yes. Who is this person that he's complaining about? What do you mean, God? It's me. Remember me, how bad and how evil? He said, I don't know you since September 16, 1976, when you said to my son, come into my life. Mm -hmm. From that moment on, I know you. But before then, I have no record in heaven on you because all I can see is the blood of my son. Amen. So we need to know first who God is. This is spiritual warfare. You can complain to Ken tomorrow morning because I'm God. <laughs> and you'll say, well, good, he's gone. He won't come back no more. And I'm like a cold. I keep turning up. Okay. <laughs> but tonight's lesson, and I've been wrestling, wrestling with the Lord. Lord, how do you want me to go? Do you want me to talk about every spirit that I have in that book? And God said, no, because you just choke them. He said, if they want to know, they can get the book yes. back there. And I'm not being arrogant. I'm not trying to sell books. He said, what do they need to know first? Who am I? Not me. Him. Yes. So you mind if I take a little time and talk about the God of creation? who is the God of salvation. And last night we laughed a little bit, and I'll be very careful tonight because I want Tina to go home dry, okay? And I'll kind of not phrase it the way I did last night. But when God was speaking to Moses, and Moses was all concerned about how am I going to go to your people, God? What am I going to say to you Jewish people? You know how hot-headed they are, stiff-necked and rebellious. I can say that because I is one. Amen? And it's definitely in our nature, in our character. Yes. And God said to Moses, tell them, I am, that I am, according to the king's language, has sent you. But according to the Hebrew, the king of king's language, he said, you tell them, I am, the all-significant one, I am, has sent you. He's not Popeye. He doesn't go in around with a can of spinach saying, I am what I am, and I saw that I am. With the spinach to get. No, he's God. God. But let's look at God. And what God was saying, Tina, you can laugh. <laughs> what he was saying in that statement, he was saying, no matter what you're going through, no matter what conditions are in your life, I am the answer. I am the God that delivers you. And where was Israel? In bondage. Why was it in bondage? Because of their rebellion. Mm -hmm. Israel was guilty of sin. Mm -hmm. And they were justly being punished. Mm -hmm. Did God do it? No. Mm -hmm. The nation of Israel brought it upon themselves. Yes. <laughs> when we do something in rebellion to God, and judgment comes our way. It is not that God is mad at you and decided to punish you. It is because through your foolish reaction to God, you have brought the judgment of God upon you. You have disobeyed him. You have broken covenant. And as much as he wants to protect you, as much as he wants to be your cover, that's what these prayer things are about. They're a covering. They're a prayer class. A place where you meet with God alone. Amen? And God wants to do that. But when you break covenant, you tie God's hand. And he can't do anything. And because you've broken covenant, the door is open to the enemy. And he rushes in and brings all kinds of disaster. Right. And how do we get that? Well, wisdom. We repent. Mm. We go to God. And Lord, I've sinned against you. No excuses. Well, why did you sin against me, son? Did your wife make you sin? No, Lord. The woman which you give on to me is not a curse, but a blessing. And she encourages me, and she counsels me, and she shares wisdom with me. No, Lord, is not the woman. Ah, was it the snake, the devil? No, Lord. It wasn't the devil. Though he tried, it wasn't him, Lord. Then 
What made you do what you did? Me, Lord. Mm. No blame. Me. Amen. There's no one I can blame <laughs> but myself. I sinned against you through the desires of my flesh, through the arrogancy of my self-importance. I broke commandment. I've sinned. And I need to come to you and repent. And God says, I forgive. And immediately he covers me. Amen. 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 Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner, the Lord my cover. Mm -hmm. And the devil can't see me, he can't touch me any longer. <laughs> and it ends. But I've learned the lesson. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I won't be so stupid any longer to put myself in that position. Mm -hmm. But see, I have this powerful God who says I am the all-significant one. Mm -hmm. I am. I am the provider of everything you will ever need in your life. Mm -hmm. Lord, I don't feel good. Boy, my muscles want to convulse real bad. I'm, I really am tired and I feel so terrible. And the Lord said, I'm your healer. Mm -hmm. I sent forth my word to heal you. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can stop my word from healing you is your unbelief that my word is strong enough to heal you. Does it mean that we all will get healed? No, some people don't get healed, but that's between God and that person. Mm -hmm. And I can't pick it up, and I'm not going to waste my life trying to judge that person. Leave them alone and pray for them. Amen. Okay, but God has said to me, the God that said, I will save you, has said, I will heal you. Therefore, he will heal me. Because he is not a man that he should lie, or the son of a man that he should change his mind. For his yeas are yeas, and his nays are nays. Amen? That's written in the book, too. <laughs> and Lord, you are my protector. And in the Old Testament, and I wish, once again, God would reveal... I do so much reading, sometimes I forget to memorize this scripture. And this one particular scripture jumped out at me. Because in the New Testament, we speak about our weapons of warfare. Amen? Mm -hmm. Our helmet. Mm -hmm. Our sword. The breastplate. These are all great. Our, our sandals. Okay? And me, I have a problem going to battle with sandals. It's like, no, I want army boots on my feet with steel toes. Okay? <laughs> But I understand that the sandals at that time were very, very the end thing, and they helped the feet quite a bit, okay? And they were constructed for war. Amen. But the one amazing thing that says, take up the shield of faith, which you quench the fiery dots of the adversary would. Amen? Amen? But in the Old Testament, God says, I go before you as a shield of faith to quench the fiery dots. So if I have a choice whether I'm to pick it up and defend myself mm -hmm. or let God defend me, I choose to let God defend me because nothing's going to get by him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So when I'm in a situation and the enemy is attacking me, I am the all-significant one who rises up as my defender, as my shield. Mm -hmm. He goes before me in the strength of the battle and he blocks the assault of the enemy. <laughs> from coming near me with his own shield, with his own faith. If I am in need of anything, the Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God will not fail. But the key there is your needs, not your wants. <laughs> what you need, he will give you. Show appreciation for that, and he will give you even more. But understand, the promise is what you need, not what you want. There's a difference. But the all-significant one is able to provide that. Lord, I feel alone. I'm a stranger in this state called New Hampshire. These are not even my denominational people. <laughs> Dear Lord, once again, you've sent a Jew among Gentiles. And God said, you don't go alone. I go with you. Amen. I stick closer to you than a brother. I'm even closer than a friend. Amen? Friends get pretty close. Your husband's going to slap me. But okay. Friends get close. But God said, I stick closer. Lord, I feel rejected. Even my mother and father has turned their backs on me. They don't understand me. Well, I said, when your mother and your father forsake you, I'll pick you up. Yeah. 
Yes. Don't you understand, son? Whatever problem you have, I am the answer to it. But Lord, I'm a little lost sheep, but I'm the great shepherd. Lord, I'm locked in here. There's no way out. He said, son, I'm the door. Come through me. It's too dark. I can't see. I'm the light. Lord, I'm dying. I'm the resurrection. Everything you need. You can't outproblem me because I have the solution to everything. Get to know me. Understand my name. Lord, I'm in a battle and the enemy surrounds me. Where can I go? He said, here in the strong tower. <laughs> and I will cover you. Amen. I am your banner. I am Jehovah Nisi. Yes. The Lord you're covering. The Lord you shelter. The oh, Lord your yes. hiding place. Lord, I'm troubled in mind, but I am the Lord your Shabbat. Your Sabbath. I am the Lord your Shalom, your peace. Amen. Let your mind be at rest. I'm here, son. But Lord, the enemy is too much for me. It's not your fight. It's mine. So hide behind me, because I'm your shield. So what problem do you have? God has a name for it. You know your commercial? There's an app for that. And don't let Dr. Lewis touch it because he'll mess that up too. And God says, there's a name for that. Just call upon it. Call upon it. And I will answer. Come. Learn of me. Yes. And I will teach you the deep things of my kingdom. I will reveal the secret things unto you. Thank you. That's how much God loves you. God doesn't want you in the dark about nothing. The name of God, or the names of God, every name is mm -hmm. an indication or a reflection of his attribute. Amen. When you say God's name, Jehovah Rath, the Lord my shepherd. What's a shepherd? He's a protector and he's a guide. <coughs> Amen? Amen? I don't feel well. Oh, Jehovah my doctor, mm -hmm. my healer. I need to be able to raise some money up to pay my rent. Ah, Jehovah my provider. Amen. There's a name for it. That's right. Lord, I need to be protected. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner, my covering. There's a name for everything. Know his name. Say his name. Get to know him by his name. Fellowship with him, with his name. Walk with him and say, Lord, it's amazing, but you've got a name for everything. But your names are only a reflection of you. So by knowing your names, Father, this is spiritual warfare, whether you agree it or not. Yes. By knowing your name, I know you. And by knowing you, I can trust you. And by trusting you, I can come into agreement with you. And by coming into agreement with you, wherever two or more agree, it shall be done according to their faith. Now, my faith is like this, but yours is like this. So if I agree with my brother or my sister and a miracle happens, what will happen when I agree with you? Creation and solution. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, and, and, and the Lord wants you to understand these things. He wants you to really know about Him. You know, when I met Him face to face, He offered me my seat. He said, that's your seat, son. You burned it. Go sit. And I felt so embarrassed in the presence of the saints. I looked at the saints sitting around the different tables that were there. I knew them, and I knew they knew me. And I knew what they went through in their lives of devotion to God. And I said, God, how can I sit with these giants? He said, because you are one. And I went, who's he talking to now? Okay. But I wrestled with the Lord. I said, Lord, let me go back, please. I haven't finished. I haven't accomplished anything. I feel so incomplete. Mm -hmm. 
And the Lord said, I'll let you go back. He said, but I want you to do this. Introduce me to my people. Hear this, folks. I don't care what your denomination is. I don't care if you believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts, or you don't believe in it. You're still a people of God. If you don't agree with me, that's okay, because I'm a man and I have some things that are wrong, but I have some things that are right. The same about you. It's not important that you agree with me. It's important that you agree with him and his word. Amen. You have to understand you are his people. And he has a deep concern that his people do not know him. Because if they knew him, if we know him, and the power in his name, we would fear no one. We would fear nothing. Because we know him. And we know that when he commissions us to do something, there is no power on the earth that can stop us from doing it. And he gives us examples of it in the New Testament. <coughs> when Jesus got into the boat and he was going to the other side, he decided, I'll go back in the fantail and I'll catch a nap. He's like, Ken, give me 30 minutes and I'll be back up an hour. Man don't sleep at night. He sleeps 30 minutes in a day, and then he's up answering phones all day long, okay? That's why I don't learn about phones. That way I don't have to answer. That's what I have a wife for. <laughs> but when he was in that boat, the enemy sent the storm. Now, it's an amazing thing. Once again, the Jewish thing. That storm was not a natural storm. Only two times was a word for storm used. One was in the Old Testament, one was in the New Testament. And this was not a physical, natural storm. This was a spiritual storm, a whirlwind of destruction. It was a demonic principality who operated in the physical world through a storm. And it came to destroy Jesus before he could get to the other side. Because he understood that on the other side was a man that was in bondage. Okay? And if Jesus met him, the bondage would end. Amen? Amen. But what he didn't know is the father had commissioned the son to go. And when the father commissions you, the power that is needed to accomplish what you've been sent to do, is within you and it will manifest and do and no power can stop you if you knew your god you would have confidence in that now when i say this folks i'm not picking on you i'm talking to all of us if we get to know god he said come learn of me take my yoke it's not heavy it's not burdensome. Mm -mm. It's liberating. Mm -mm. Put it upon you. Mm -mm. I remember many years ago, I thought about having my right ear pierced. Mm -hmm. Because I found out it's a custom that when you are a slave and you serve your master for seven years, or well, you're given freedom, but if you love your master, mm -hmm. you have your right ear pierced, mm -hmm. indicating that for the rest of your life, you will serve him. Okay? From a willing heart. And I said, Lord, I want to be a willing slave to you. I want to serve you all the days of my life. And I want people to know that, so I'll pierce my ear. And God said, no, pierce your heart instead. Amen? Amen. That all these demonic things and these principalities will realize that with that pierced heart, you belong to me. Yes. And serve me from a willing heart. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. But as I get to know God, to fellowshipping with God, to go into the dry and barren places, walk into the valley in the shadow of death, I come to understand that God never leaves me or forsakes me. And he always makes a way for me. He makes straight the crooked path. I am the God that makes straight the crooked path. I am the Lord that prepares the table in the wilderness in the presence of your enemies. I am the God that causes your enemies to call you blessed. 
I am the God that motivates man to give to you good measures pressed down and overflowing. Amen? Amen. I am the Lord who delivers you. I am the Lord that loves you. Mm -mm. Amen? Amen? That's your God. So do you understand Him? Can you get a revelation of Him? Because you need to get a new revelation of Jesus. Because the revelation of the infant in the cradle is not enough to keep you going. The revelation of the rabbi walking to the streets of Jerusalem doing good deeds is not enough. The revelation of the one hanging on the cross is not enough. It may motivate you to love. But the revelation of the risen Christ is still not enough. you got to get a vision of the returning Christ. You see, you know the lamb, now it's time to know the lion. You've got to see the one that's coming back in absolute authority and power, and all knees will bow, and all tongues confess that Yeshua is Adonai, Jesus is Lord, to the glory of Abba, Elohim, to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Amen. You need to see that one because that's the one you are like. You're not under the first Adam anymore. The first Adam was a living soul that came to bring destruction and darkness into the world. And you was under him as a slave and you served the God of this world. He was your father. He was a murderer. He was a liar. He was a fornicator. He was a thief. And there was nothing good but you had your father's nature. Me too. But then Jesus came, the second Adam, who was a life-giving spirit, who brought life and light everywhere he came. And he gave that to you. He delivered you from the kingdom of the first Adam into the kingdom of the second Adam. He said, you are created in my image, therefore you will do what I did. Go forth and bring life and light. You're not under the first Adam anymore. You're not of the earth anymore. Get it into you. Please, people, understand this. I'm not angry. I'm concerned. God said, go, teach my people. And I know how it breaks his heart because it breaks mine. His people don't want to know. They want to sit in the pews and be contented. What's happening in Egypt is going to be happening in America. The devil is going to be standing on the door and saying, denounce or die. And if we don't know him, we won't have the courage to stand for him. But when you know him, beyond a shadow of a doubt, no devil can threaten you. And this earth is of no value to you because your treasures is in heaven. Where thieves cannot break in and rust cannot affect. Amen? Amen. Amen. Know him. And then next, know about Satan. Ah. Now we're talking about spiritual warfare. We're talking about the devil. We're talking about a defeated foe. And everybody fears him so much. Now, do not disrespect him. And do not speak arrogantly against him. Mm -hmm. And do not falsely accuse him of doing something in your life that you have done mm -hmm. and not him. Without Jesus, you have no chance. With Jesus, he has no chance. But learn a lesson from Michael, the great archangel, the defender of Israel. When in the argument with Lucifer over the body of Moses, he said, he said, it, it, he dared not bring a railing accusation against him, but rather said, the Lord God rebukes you, Lucifer, not I. And here's Michael, the one that threw Lucifer out of heaven, and yet he respect Lucifer's position. Because he knew it wasn't him that did it, it was God who empowered him with the ability to defeat Satan in the battle. And once again, in the near future, he will throw Satan out of the second heaven where he is. 
In case you don't know, Satan is not in hell. Right. He's never been in hell. He's never visited hell. Never took a vacation in hell. Because hell is a prison house for spirits. And once you're there, you can't leave. And even Satan, if he was there, could not leave. You understand that. But I've been taught Satan is in hell tormenting the people. No, Satan is in the second heaven. Mm -hmm. In his throne, ruling and reigning from there. Mm -hmm. He's known as the prince and the power of the air. Mm -hmm. He's also known as the prince of this world. The prince of darkness. Mm -hmm. And he's known as the god of this world. Mm -hmm. I have not called him this. Jesus called him that. Amen? Yes. But he's dethroned. And he's a lion without teeth. The Lord has removed them. And I used to share a little story. So it's time to make you laugh. There's a story in my life that is real. I was a little boy. I grew up in a city called Taunton. Uh, there's a pastor and his wife who was pastoring in Rainham, which is a city next to Taunton, Mass. And I grew up in the housing project. It was nicknamed Hell's Kitchen because everybody there was so godly. And yeah. Okay, but we'll get past that. And we used to go down to a swimming hole. But every time we went to the swimming hole, we had to go beyond this old farmer's land. And he had the ugliest dog on the world. And, I mean, this dog was so ugly, it had to walk backwards to a mirror or he'd scare himself. <laughs> you gotta imagine this dog. And every time we'd come, he'd come running in the chain and grab him. But he, you know, if I get up, I'm gonna eat you alive and we all, brave little courageous kids we were ran down the road screaming ah! gone but every day we went by the dog was tied up but well, one day he wasn't and he came and of course we all screamed and we were running and I was the second slowest but thank God there was somebody slower than me <laughs> and the dog got him and all us brave kids kept running and I, gee, we're really going to miss you, Manny. <laughs> okay? But, but tell your mom you died bravely. Screaming, but died bravely. But he wasn't screaming. He was laughing. So we all stopped, and he said, wait, this isn't right. Something's wrong here. Manny's laughing. I mean, he was laughing so hard, tears were coming out of his eyes. And he's laying on his back, and he's laughing and laughing. So we went down to see what happened, and the old farmer come out and called his dog off, right? And Manny's sitting there, and when the dog grabbed him, there's no hose. And I said, Manny, he said, he's got no teeth. He was gumming me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The dog didn't realize he didn't have any teeth anymore. In his mind, he was that young, ferocious dog. But in reality, he was like me, toothless. <laughs> Amen. And he was gumming the lake. In his heart, he was doing something terrible. But in reality, he was just making his victim laugh. And the enemy's teeth has been pulled by the Lord. He goes about as a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. There's only one roaring lion. It's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Of Judah. Amen. Amen. He imitates. That's, That's all the devil can do. That's right. He cannot create. He can only imitate. Imposter. Okay. And God has stripped him of his power. And he has no power over the children of God. <laughs> yes, he is powerful to those who don't know the Lord. Yeah. He rules them with a rod of iron. Yep. And he has authority over their life. He has other principalities in the heavenly places working with him. He has demonic forces on the earth carrying out his demands to cause all kinds of troubles and tribulations and trials. But those that are born again, covered in the blood and filled with the Spirit, even when he attacks, will prevail against him. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. Yes. Is this not true? True.